Unit number two, the name of the topic is relevance of Keynesian theory tools to the developing countries. Introduction, the Keynesian theory is strictly applicable to advanced capitalist countries. That is why it is mostly said that Keynesian theory has very little importance in solving the problems of economic development of developing countries. But nevertheless, Keynesian theory still provides certain basic tools for economic growth of developing countries. A.K. Das Gupta has said that the Keynesian economics was developed in a setting which is entirely different from that of underdeveloped countries. That means the Keynesian economics theory was developed in a situation or in a country which is different from that of the UDC. The nature of problems of two types of country is quite different and therefore the Keynesian techniques of analysis and policy recommendations are not very helpful in the context of underdeveloped countries that is in case of UDCs. Let us now understand the relevance or importance of some of the major aspects of Keynesian theory to developing economies. The first point is effective demand. According to Keynes, in the advanced capitalist countries, unemployment is caused due to deficiency of effective demand. Th that means lack of demand. So in order to overcome this situation, Keynes has encouraged more of spending. This will result in creation of employment in advanced capitalist countries. On the other hand, the situation in developing countries is very very much different. In developing countries, there exists disguised unemployment. So in such countries, unemployment is not caused due to lack of effective demand, but because of lack of resources, that is deficiency of resources. So in order to overcome this, Keynes has suggested that developing countries need to reduce their spending and increase their savings for capital formation. This will result in increase in economic development in developing countries. Point number two is propensity to consume. One of the most important tool of Keynesian economics is the propensity to consume. Propensity to consume in simple words means the proportion of income in the hands of public which they can spend on their consumption. Keynes economics has shown a relationship between income and consumption. In advanced nations, when there is an increase in the income and consumption, it leads to increase in effective demand, thus further leading to increase in the level of production and employment. On the other hand, the situation is very different in developing countries. In developing countries, this relationship between income and consumption does not take place. Rather, in developing countries, when income increases, people spend more on consumption goods. This is because there is unavailability of sufficient resources, thus further leading to production of consumer goods that does not increase, finally leading to a rise in the prices of commodities instead of level of employment. Next point is propensity to save. Another important tool of Keynesian economics is propensity to save. Propensity to save shows a relationship between income and savings. So when income is high, 
the consumption is lower than the increase in income and thus the savings increases. In advanced countries, according to Keynes, there is excess of savings. This leads to a fall in aggregate demand. Therefore, in such advanced countries, Keynes has encouraged that they should spend more. On the other hand, in developing countries, increase in savings leads to an increase in the capital formation, further leading to economic development. Thus, developing countries can break this circle of poverty by reducing their spending and increase their saving. Point number four is investment multiplier. According to Keynesian theory, investment multiplier and MPC that is marginal propensity to consume are directly related. Thus, as the income of the people increases, they start consuming more and thus more income goes on consumption. That is the reason there is increase in production and thus further leading to increase in national income. But on the other hand, in developing economies, though MPC is high, but multiplier is comparatively lower. Point number five is rate of interest. According to Keynes, rate of interest is regarded as secondary determinant of investment. Further, as per Keynes, lower the rate of interest, higher will be the level of investment. But in developing nations, this relationship between rate of interest and level of investment is very weak. Factors on which investment depends on are market uncertainties, government policies. This all takes place rather than the rate of interest. The last point, number six, is liquidity preference theory. Keynes liquidity preference theory explains us why people like to hold cash. One of the most important motive to hold cash is speculative motive. Speculative motive means people's desire to hold cash just in case if there is an attractive investment opportunity if it arises. Further, Thus, people like to hold cash under speculative motive to take advantage of fluctuations in bond and stock markets. But in developing economies, it is observed that liquidity preference is high, that is people like to hold cash not due to speculative motive, but due to market uncertainties. That is because people are fear, they have a fear in themselves. That is the reason due to these emergency situations, they like to hold cash. So to conclude, we can say that the Keynesian theory may be inapplicable to the problems of developing countries, but Keynesian tools of analysis can help in understanding the major problems of any economy, whether developed or developing.